जयपुर दिल्ली में आपका स्वागत लखनऊ जंक्शन I tell you one thing: when butler service begins, wins are handed to you on a platter, and that's what Joss, the boss, has done for Rajasthan. Made it four out of four. And uh, well, in case you, as a Rajasthan fan, was worried that uh, there's no contributions coming from Jaiswal and Butler, well, you've seen it today. And this is what happens when a very good batting attack gets uh, one of their kingpins to come back into form. He dials in a hundred of fifty-eight balls and gets the team to victory with uh, six wickets to spare, five balls still in hand. And honestly, that's looking a little closer. than it was in reality Rajasthan now has 8 points from 4 and Bangalore unfortunately has just the one win from 5 games you're watching Crick Buzz live I'm Gaurav Kapoor with me Harsha Bhogle and Michael Vaughn and a very happy Michael Vaughn because his paddle buddy Josh <laughs> Butler <laughs> I'm taking yeah. credit for that that's cuz it's obviously something that has happened mm. the last 2 days when you played paddle with him probably said something mm. you he's had a level unlock as they say in the video games yeah he he's batted a lot better than he plays paddle <laughs> 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 Probably my uh, uh, the reason why we lost was because of me but that's a proper innings that was uh, you know what was he after the first 10 deliveries he faced he was 10 10 off 10 yeah. and then suddenly starts to get the boundaries going and that's what he's about once he starts to go he's just thinking every single ball where can I get the boundaries yeah and if the ball's not quite there he still whacks it to the cover point boundary down to long off but then he dinks it into the onside and he got so many twos just dinking it into uh, the onside he's uh, he's a wonderful player Rajasthan 3 and 3 they were getting excited Rajasthan 4 and 4 with Butler back in form the Rajasthan Royal supporters might start to get even more excited now I love how they say it in the UK right that word is one of my favorite words they are proper contenders now proper they are that was a proper innings and they are proper contenders because uh, that's just been amazing and let's not uh, take away from sanju samson today the captain because the partnership uh, harsha that jos butler and sanju samson have had i mean that's just a dream partnership for rajasthan these are two wonderfully selfless players yeah and yeah. you know when someone is not that is not obsessed with getting 100 and then gets 100 you can see the expression on their faces he's you know yeah because he hit net mars hitting the runs 100 was gone the only way he could have got 100 was if he took a single and then hit a six can i tell you something you called it correctly you yeah. said he can get 100 if he gets a single on the last ball and he'll hit a six on the next i'll tell you something though he went for a hit on that correct ball, yeah, right yeah. he went for a hit if it connected he wouldn't have got the 100 yeah, yeah so he wasn't looking for a little dainty single to try and get the 100 afterwards so when yeah. it, when that happens it's it, it's great fun sanju plays like that too when the two are batting the, those are two of the better looking batters in in uh international cricket they just yeah. when they hit the boundaries they just look so good mm. when sanju hits i mean sanju is one of the most beautiful batters to watch anyway yeah. and when butler's back in form butler finds spaces yeah you know suddenly you think ah oh, there's no space and butler will find a space to hit a boundary through yeah and that's why they're together they're so much fun to watch right when did they come together zero for one and yeah. they put on third 148 ball. third ball they put on 148 and under 15 overs at almost 10 and over and the number of boundaries they've hit in that partnership 26. i remember okay. when we were there the halfway mark uh one of they had a 13 boundaries between the two of them okay. in the first 10 overs and let's just if we just look at it uh michael is it fair to say Uh, let's just look at the game of uh, two halves ba- uh, Bengaluru when they bat first Rajasthan when they bat second just the difference there is uh, well yeah the boundaries right the fours yeah. is uh, the difference the dots exactly the same uh, and the the boundaries being the difference yeah, and a lot less uh, extras as well yeah for Rajasthan so oh, I'll teach you any cricket I'll, I'll keep saying it's about boundaries yeah. it really is about It's about boundaries having the skill levels to hit the boundaries. Uh it's also about the team before the individual. Mm. And and that's exactly what, you know Butler at the end there you could see it. It was purely about him just getting the team over the line. It was irrelevant that he got it's an absolute bonus. Yeah. You know, a bonus that he gets to three figures. And you look at the strike rate there of 172.41946s. I guess in a chase that's as as good a 
T20 innings that you can play, he pretty much bossed it. Yeah. From, I wouldn't say the first ball, probably from around the 11th ball that he faced. Yeah. When he took a bit of time, he didn't look like he had his feet going, he didn't look like he had any kind of fluency at the beginning of his innings, and then suddenly he starts to hit a boundary or two, and you just know with Butler, once he starts hitting the boundaries, that little flick off Siraj actually. Over That's what started, didn't yeah, it? He that, just yeah. flicked one over the keeper's head, and I thought, yeah, he'll be okay. Arshad, is it fair to say, that Rajasthan in this chase were just, there was never any danger. No. It never. Bangalore never came into the game. There was never any danger. I think after the first 40 50 runs at 0 4, you just thought, oops, one more wicket goes down, you never know. Yeah. But but the moment that partnership took root, it really was a question of when. And even though they lost Samson, they lost Parag, uh, they lost Jurel, it didn't really matter. They were always ahead. You look at it and say there were just five balls left. Yeah. But there was never any stress. The previous over, they only scored five. They could easily have got another 10 runs. So the, 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 yeah. the reason why there was no stress from him is because they bowled an attack. I mean, yeah. the RCB boy, I keep saying it, it, it's just got, it's got no wow factor. It hasn't got that bowler or, I reckon in T20 cricket, the champion team this year, they'll have three or four wow factor bowlers. Yeah. I, I mean, Reese Topley bowled beautifully. What did he get? Two for 27, yeah. he bowled lovely. But, you know, would you describe him as a wow factor bowler? I, I, no. I don't think I think he's steady. You know, mm. a real good kind of consistent. He's one of five, isn't he? He's, he's not he's a boomer. He's one of five. He's a steady bowler. I just look at that attack and think, how have the RCB once again arrived at an IPL with an attack like that? Yeah. I, I just look at their think tank, the whole operation, uh, the management, uh, the, au the auctioneers that are in charge of developing this team. And it's been happening for many, many years. And it continues to produce that, which is a, a powerhouse batting unit with a load of stars in it. And then a bowling attack that you go, yeah, just very yeah. average. Yeah. If you remember when we sat here doing the, the preview to the tournament, we said, who's bowling spin for RCB? Yep. And they traded Mayank Dagger for Shahbaz Ahmed. So really they traded like for like. Yeah. He's a decent bowler, Mayank Dagger. And the only other bowler they had was Maxwell. They didn't even bowl him today. In spite of yeah. two good games, they didn't bowl Maxwell today. Yeah. And this leggy, maybe he's promising, maybe he just didn't have a great day today. Mm. But he doesn't look like the kind who's going to run through teams. Yeah. So, but harsh with a team like team like RCB, they've got they've got to they've got to get everything right tactically, uh, and probably with a few cherries on top. Mm. You know, everything's got to work for them. You know, no DK coming in, but down the back end again. That's just yeah. a, a tactical blunder. Why isn't Glenn Maxwell bowled a ball? So Faf after the match said uh, that. Glenn Maxwell would have bowled if there was a left-hander. But that's just, again, it's just, it's just, <laughs> yeah. why? <laughs> you know, Sanju and Joss Butler, the left-hand spinner, he got, he got, what did he hit, 34 in 36 two in two. Well, they, 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 they there lies my point is that they, they are, they may be just, they might be a team that actually is, is playing through the computer. Yeah. It might be a team that is so dependent on, and I'll, get, I'll, I'll tell you, they want to turn the computer off because it's not working. <laughs> you know, go and buy a new one, go and get a, a new I, I, iPad or something because whatever the Mac is, it's not working. Yeah. Because the computer, whatever it's telling them in terms of matchups, to think that Glenn Max was not bowled one ball yeah. when he's bowled beautifully in two of the last three games, just because he's bowling to right, what? So an offspin has never got a right hander out, ever. Yeah. Come on. Yes, yes, some more. Ravi Chandran Ashwin, four overs, 28. Who did he bowl to? Kohli, Duplessis, Maxwell. Correct. Agree. Yeah, and it's, it's, right a, it's a great question that Michael's asking. Is Glenn Maxwell never got a right-hander out? So that's why. If you, ca you can't focus so much on... Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Is The computer says that an off-spinner should only bowl to a left-hander. That comes out of the computer. Your cricket sense, when you're out in the middle, when Sanju and Josh are going, well, we might as well throw it to Maxi. Yeah. He's got a bit of a golden arm. Yeah. He's quite a smart cricket. And do you know what they're going to do? They're going to try and whack him. Yeah. So guess what might happen? He might get them caught on the boundary. Correct. You have three riders on the boundary, which you will on the onside. No doubt Butler Sanju is going to try and clear it. You never know. One might go straight to hand. In a bit of desperation, sometimes you have to go against the grain of what you're thinking. He's also bowled well, him. Michael. He's been in form. He's had a couple of good games. So yeah, he's well. It was, sh it was quite shocking. A Especially team. when the spinners did so well uh, when Rajasthan were bowling. We thought that Maxwell would bowl. Have you seen Little Britain? <laughs> yeah? You, you know what I'm talking about, right? Computer says no. Nah. <laughs> Computer says no. Sorry, this is a. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's got me on you, that. Yeah. Just, <laughs> not just beyond. No, no, it's he's, no, over. no he's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, though, isn't it? <laughs> so, yeah, they had a few computer says no moments today. Uh, you got to watch the skit, trust me. Just uh, on, on, a, on the previous games, Maxwell got Stoinis out, KL Rahul. 
Yeah, there you, you go. You're kind of looking like you can get right handers out. It's, yeah. it's not impossible. I, you know something? I feel like it's just something that Faf has said after the match. I don't know if maybe, or maybe it was. Maybe, maybe that was the case. But he also said that uh, he has admitted that they could have pushed harder. They thought that 190 mm. was kind of a pass score. But he has said after the game that they could have pushed harder. And exactly as we spoke in the mid-game show, that they left a few runs on the table. So he says said about 15, 20 So he runs. said 190 was, was a pass score. Yeah. So when you're going out to bat, you want a little overpower. Correct. Overpower. Correct. So he thinks they're about 15 to 18 short. So here's here's what's going to happen, right? Because remember, sorry to interrupt. Remember, we were talking about 200 even in the combox, yeah, and how absolutely. can they get to 200 from here? They, they totally should have it. 88 for no loss at 10, they should have. All right, let's address the elephant in the room, mm -hmm. right? Because everybody's going to be talking about it. People will say Virat Kohli got a century. He got it in a losing cause, right? And he scored uh, 113 and he scored it in 72 balls and that strike rate. Uh, the only thing I'm going to say is the thing I said in the mid-game show is that in context, you see that 156 strike rate, but you also see what the other batters did on the other end. When you see Joss Butler batting, you see Sanju Samson and they're both kind of feeding off off each other, yeah. right? Because they're both attacking the bowling. When Virat is playing that 156 uh, strike rate 100, mm -hmm. on the other side, you've got all the batters together get 59 from 48 balls. Correct. So when you play we can't view the 156 in isolation. No, when you play at a 156 strike rate, you're playing a 185, 186 kind of game. Yeah. When you play a 185, 186 kind of game for 70 balls, you always have somebody, as we said in the mid show, who's got 15 of seven. Yeah. We've got 16 of 9. Yep. You get those little contributions that stretches the, the total to about 200. Yep. So one guy's ensuring that you're playing at about a 180, 185 game. Now, if Virat's got these runs at a striker of 140, hmm. then you're saying, oh, come on. It means all the others have to, everybody else has to strike at 210 yeah. to be able to achieve a par score. 156, yeah, maybe slightly slower. Mm. But remember, there was no one else scoring runs at that end. So, right. we've been critical of Virat in the past mm. for, for strike rate issues. But I think today, if he had got those little contributions from the others, that have got 200. Mm. I still think 200, the way they were playing, would have been chased down. Yeah. But at least you had a little more in the bank. In case a couple of wickets went down, you got a couple of good overs. You know, you had, you had something to play with. Yeah, there you go, right? Fair summation, you think, Michael? No, Virat played absolutely fine. Yeah, I thought he played a beautiful innings. He played the role that he's he's there to do. Do I ever think that Virat's going to strike at two hundred? Probably not. Mm. Yeah, he's going to always be around one fifty six, one seventy. Absolutely perfect. What he what he needed was a Glenn Maxwell. Yeah, correct. Now Glenn Maxwell is the player that so far this year is just not delivering for for the RCB. What you needed was a, a ten ball. 28 or 30 off Glenn Maxwell, which he's very capable of doing. And then they would have got to 200, maybe a little bit beyond. Yeah. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of um, the RCB parts that aren't working. Uh, and the one debate of Virat Kohli and Diddy Bat, that's absolutely not a debate at the minute. He played absolutely fine. It's uh, it's the rest of that batting line that really struggled. And mm -hmm. if they'd have played to any kind of standard, and they'll be, you know, look at Cameron Green, what do you get, five or six? Yeah. yeah. Those six yeah. balls are 12. He's got 13 of those six. You've got you see, 195. You, you see some players, you know, it's been in this year's IPO where some players have batted for six six balls and got 20. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's what was required from Cameron Green, but I don't understand why he went in when DK's... DK's done that, in fact. D, DK sat on the bench having a cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just I, I, I'll keep going on about this RCB think tank. It is... Andy Flower's a magnificent coach. Yeah. But for some reason, I, I don't know, they're just overcomplicating life. So look at it from DK's point of view. He scores 20 out of 10. Anuj Rawat keeps wickets. He puts his feet up, has a cup of tea. Today he has a cup of tea while batting. He's got to keep wickets for 20, 20 overs. Yeah. But if you remember, Abhishek Porel got 31 of 10. Hmm. Then uh, the other day, uh, when Lucknow are playing. No, yeah. not Lucknow. But Punjab are playing. Yeah. Abhishek Sharma, they got those runs at no, the end. Shashank and Ashutosh. Shashank Ashutosh. and Ashutosh. Yeah. Shashank and Ashutosh got those runs at the end. When you come in at the end in those six balls, you get 15. Yeah. Right? I said 10. You get 15. That's another 10 runs more than they've got now. Yeah. You've got 193. Yeah. They're nudging 200 a little bit here and there. Yeah. But they needed to get those. So when you're coming in at that stage, that is what you have to do. Well, so, Harsha, the, you know, DK, his whole game is built for the that. last few years, he well, he talks about it. Yep. He practices for that. Mm. That's what he, he jumps out of the, the dugout and he goes out there and he's like, right, I'm ready because this is what I'm here for. I'm, I'm here to hit my first ball to the boundary. Yep. Now, Cameron Green, he's not geared for that kind of role. Mm. He's at the top of the order where he gets a bit of time and maybe gets in for the first six and he can hit a few over the top. But 
his game's not geared for the last few balls. Mm. You know, his mind, he, he'll try and he'll give it everything yeah, in. He yeah. did tonight, he'll give it everything. But, you know, when you've got a specialist that is there for that role and he's not gone out to play that role, again, I just don't understand the RCB think tank. So, again, I mean, if you talk about Fab's captaincy, we saw Pat Cummins the other day. Pat Cummins has come into the IPL uh, Australian test captain, not even the T20 captain, comes in and obviously being lauded a lot, has utilised his resources as well. I guess when a team is winning, uh, the captain looks good as well. Uh, but here with Faf, I think we've just pointed out with that brain's trust, uh, with whatever that management is, whoever's thinking, we've, there's, a, there's a few things which are pretty glaring. Mahipal Lomra are not playing. He's in the impact sub list, but he's not playing. Uh, Glenn Maxwell doesn't bowl despite getting some big scalps in the previous games. And uh, DK doesn't come out to bat in that position. Are those, those, whether they're instinctive decisions or they're planned decisions, both seem to have some glaring holes in them. And, and to be fair, and I'll let you in, we're not just saying this after the, uh, after the match has been lost and pretend to be very clever and say this is what they could have done. Yeah. All through the 20 overs, we're sitting and watching this game. That's what we're talking about. We spoke about Lomro before the game began, yeah. in fact. Yeah. And I don't know, sometimes do teams get into almost panic mode and stop thinking. Saying, oh, we, we must win today, we must win today. Whereas someone needs to just take a step back and say, you know what? Yeah, we lost three games. We win eight games. That's all right. We can lose six and still qualify. I, I just think with us, I don't think they're a good enough team on paper to not get everything right. You know, with that bowling attack, <laughs> they have to get everything right. And yeah. that's got to be tactically a think tank. Um, and that starts with the batting. Even though they've got a powerhouse batting line up on paper, you know, they still have to aim. And if I was the RCB team, I'd be thinking, well, if, if Pars 180, we really do need 200. We've got to give our bowlers at least 20 yeah. more. So you start I'd, thinking of 200 from, say, the 9 or 10 over mark, right? I, I would put, look, they play 14 games, and, and with that team, I would, I would prefer the RCB side to go absolutely to go and get 225 on every occasion. If they get bowled out for 120, doing it on three or four occasions out of the 14, I'd be going, but that's, that's our remit, that's what we're about, because we need as many as possible, because our bowling attack, it just isn't good enough. Because par is anyway not winning you the matches. Par will not win. Yeah, so you've got to go way above. Attack, they're not going to win, so they've got to understand, they can't do anything about the bowling attack this year, they can't suddenly go and, they can't suddenly go and get four or five legendary bowlers. They might do next year in the auction, but this year, how can they maximise what they've got? They've got to get big scores on the board and give that bowling unit something to bowl to. They've got, they are in Jaipur. They can just take Chahel back with them. Nick him. Yeah, just they nick him. Put him in a box. Yeah, he's already got an RCB shirt. Yeah. And doesn't require too much space either. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> just put him yeah, A couple of guys can wrap him up and yeah. just take him along. Uh, perhaps, no, but... Uh, and then he just plays under a different name. Tomo did that once, you know, Jeff Thompson. <laughs> Jeff Thompson once punched a referee and was banned. So he just came in and played the next game uh, another under a different name, hoping the referee wouldn't recognize him. Are you serious? Serious. He told me the story. He used to play soccer. He used to play football. Yeah. He had a problem with the referee, so he was banned for a game or two. He came and played the next one, thinking no one recognized him. His name on the team sheet was probably something else. Yeah. Obvious with the blonde locks. <laughs> that is brilliant. <laughs> no, he was a character. He was a character. He'd mark, <laughs> he'd mark out his run-up and then just ask Greg Chappell at the start of the season, do I run off 10 or 12? <laughs> <laughs> but I also say about yeah. the RCB, I look at you know, Glenn Maxwell. He's a, he's a legendary white ball specialist. Yes. You know, he, he, he's not won a, an IPL with the RCB. Neither is Virat Kohli. Yeah. You know, two great players. You know, I look at Glenn Maxwell, who plays for in the Big Bash in Australia, the Melbourne Stars. They are the star. They've never won mm. the Big Bash. And I look at some of these franchises and, and these teams, and they have legendary names. And it just proves to me, unless you get the team structure right and the team ethic right and the culture around the dressing room and the management, everything's got to be team. You know, who does that, Michael? It, Who's responsible for that? Well, I think the captain and the coach. Correct. So the captain is worth two players. I keep saying it. Captain and the captain is worth two players yeah. in long leagues like this. Yeah. An EPL runs over four months, five months. Why is the manager important? Not just because well, he buys or sells players. The, to me, in the, the IPL, the, the captain, you know, with the coach, but more the captain manages the team and the players. Yeah. The coach manages the captain mm. and the team and also up. The coach has yeah. got to manage up. Yes. So the ownership of all these franchises, powerful and obviously they're all desperate for their teams to win. It's so important that the coach and with a little bit of the help from the captain manage up. So I think the pressure that they get put under and the, the stresses that come from losing games in the IPL, I would say it's probably more than they get from playing for the international teams. Yeah, yeah Because absolutely. the international teams, you, you don't have an owner. You don't yeah. have someone that can Absolutely. ring you up and say, what were you doing? Yeah. You might have the chairman of the ECB or the BC. That was a poor performance. Yeah, sorry, we'll try and improve next time. But you don't get the stresses and strains from ownership. 
Yeah. So this is the hardest league to play in. So here's something interesting. Gujarat Titans win one year, almost win a second year. Ashish Nehra is the coach. You put Ashish Nehra in a boardroom, there's chaos and confusion mm. because he, he will not understand the language of the owners. So Ashish Nehra is kept aside, separate, segregated, and Vikram Solanki deals with them. Yeah. So there's a clearly defined role. Vikram Solanki will deal with the owners. Ashish Nehra will, will look after the cricket team. Yep. And mm. help Hardik Pandya become a better captain. Mm. And, and, and they do well. So all these things count. And I think more and more the IPL will start looking like the premiership. Yeah. And it'll be very interesting to see which are the teams that do well in the premiership and why. Mm. I mean, that's, that's many more games, that's 38 games, that's over five months. But you see the role of the manager there is not just to buy and sell players, True. but to ensure that the team is looking good, the team is pulling together. I think we're already in that stage in the IPL where you've just got to ensure it's everybody pulling together. Yep. Players are playing 15 balls. Yeah. So you don't have to have five match winners, 10 match winners in your side. Everyone pulling in the same direction, 15 balls, you still win. Yeah, it's like that Cambridge-Oxford race, right? The boat race. Everybody's yeah. got to do their bit. And Michael will tell you as captain, managing 15 people is hard enough. Managing 25 must be a nightmare. Yeah, and that's the size of some of these squads. They've got yeah. that many. And also you've got the physios, the masseuses, the, the trainers. You know, you're, you're talking of a big team. And then the families are here, which is great. You have your families here. And that adds a little bit more of a stress as well to the players. Um, even though it's great to have your, your families here, sometimes there is a bit of a stress with that. Um, the, the ones that do it the best, and the CSK have done it the best for, for many, many years, they keep it very, very simple. Mm. And at the minute, I'm just looking at the RCB side, and I, I just can't fathom some of the tactical mistakes that they're making. I, I, can't, I can accept poor performance. Yep. That happens, that's normal. But when I see some of the tactics that aren't quite right, I think, and that goes back to, to all the games in this year's IPL. The last game with the bowling, trying to bowl Yorkers on a pitch that was doing plenty. Uh, and then tonight, just too many, just little things that add to a lot by the end of the game. Um, you know, do I think there were a, a chance of winning tonight? Yeah, but I think they need 210. Yeah. yeah. They got 210, you never know, but they probably still would have lost because the Rajasthan Royals team are quality. Is they, the, they've got everything covered. So exactly. Is, is that what the Rajasthan team is doing right? They're keeping it simple? I think so. I think so. I'm not inside the side, yeah. so I don't know. Sometimes you get the impression from the outside. We talked about Sanju being a very cool captain in our, yeah. our pre-show. Mm. But you get the feeling there's no disruptive elements in that side. Yep. I'm not saying the disruptive elements in the RCB side, but they could be giant. I mean, Virat's a giant name yeah. in the RCB side. He will have an influence on everybody else. And sometimes people will say, oh, but can I go to him or can I not go to him? Without it being his fault. But you look at the kind of players, Butler, Samson, Ashwin, Jehel. They're not, you can't come to me kind of people. Yeah. So I get the feeling looking from the outside that everybody's happy inside. Yeah. You, you saw Hetmeyer when Butler hit a six? Who was happier, Butler or Hetmeyer? Yeah. But I don't, I don't think that's been the, the case in the past that Rajasthan. I think there has been, not have been one yet. or two issues, but whatever those issues were right or, moment, or whoever that issue was, um, they're not there this year. Yeah. They, they certainly look an apps. And it's, it's always easy when you're winning. True. But they're winning because they are getting everything yeah. right. Winning becomes a habit and a, a normal trait in the team when everything is right. When everyone's happy, everyone knows their roles. And even those players that aren't playing, I think they get looked after nicely. Mm. You know, they're, they're not just put to one side. So, by the way, you're not playing. We're not looking after you. We're not even thinking of you. You know, it's all a, all a team collective of making sure, you know, the bench and those that aren't playing, you've got to look after them as well. You've got to keep them happy. You've got to keep them upbeat because... You know, there'll be players that travel around India for eight weeks and don't play a game of cricket. Yeah. Don't even look like they're playing, but they've got to be in that dressing room. They've got to be uh, contributing to the team. It might be a tactical manoeuvre. You know, one of the players that are not in the team, they might come up with the best tactic out in the middle and it gets sent to the, the middle, to the captain, and suddenly it works and you're contributing. Yeah. Ashish Nair has spoken uh, this way about Jayant Yadav. He says mm. Jayant Yadav is the guy in his team who Why wouldn't you? would kind of add tactically yeah. and probably run One a message year. out and tell you how a player's feeling, etc. Et One year after CSK had won, I remember at, at the end of the tournament doing this little interview and talking to MS and saying, what, right? he said, the thing I'm happiest about this year is a lot of good players didn't get a game, but the atmosphere in the team was very good. Yeah. Mm. So that's exactly that's nice. what Michael's saying. If we just quickly talk about uh, RCB, because obviously a lot of fans are, are concerned about that and how they can correct it, because things are looking a little bleak for them right now. Mm -hmm. When you win just one out of five, you're at two points. They've played the most number of games so far. If you see a lot of teams, uh, well, we've got uh, three teams there that have played two games less. 
right? So they've obviously played the most number of uh, games by a stretch. They have to turn it around and they have to turn it around now, like five minutes ago. What would you suggest <laughs> to them, Michael? Oh, I say it's... A couple it's of suggestions, sorry, I'll ask you a pointed question then, right? Yeah. Is that you're saying the bowling is uh, troublesome for them or yeah. the bowling is not troubling the opposition. Yeah. Do you try to get two foreign bowlers in, right? You've got Reece Well, Reese Topley's come in in the last two games and he's, yeah. he's done well, so there's a tick. Yeah. There's a positive. Virat, Virat batting at the top of the order, he's played beautifully. He's the leading run scorer by distance, so he's, he's working. So the top and tail is working, working. but you've got to do more. You, you have to think <laughs> Lockie Ferguson's going to have to get a game. Yeah. So if you're going to play Lockie Fer Ferguson and Reese Topley, one of Faf Duprasi or Cameron Green. I I'm still going to pick Glenn Maxwell. Okay. Yeah. He bowls, should have bowled tonight, he didn't, but he should. He, he will come good with the bat in hand. Hmm. I I'm pretty sure. So Maxwell, Definitely Green, Lockie Ferguson and uh, Reese Topper, there's three. So it's one of Faf and Cameron Green. Um, I'm not one for changing the captaincy. You know, I do think they've made a decision. Faf's the captain. I think he should be given a, at least another couple of games just to try and get the team winning again. And it's probably Cameron Green that will miss out. Mm. They have to try something. They, they, they can't just keep going yeah. with the same old, same old. And, and, and you're just looking at Lockie Ferguson. Look, he's a bowler that can travel, bowls pace, and he can go to all parts, but he can win a game. And that bowling attack just needs something. Yeah. So it's worth, and if they deem it a gamble, because he does bowl a little bit erratically at times, it's a gamble that I would be worth taking because that bowling attack just needs a little yeah. spark. Mm. If you look at that squad, if you look at that squad, though, I can completely understand. If one, someone's got to go out, it's Cameron Green. Lockie Ferguson comes in, Cameron Green goes out. That means an Indian fast bowler goes out, an Indian batter comes in. Yep. You have to be an Indian batter. Now, find me an Indian batter in that list. You can go up in the top order. So then Mahipa Lomro should be told, you are our number five batter. Yep. Mm. Uh, already they're struggling with Patidar, don't forget. Mm. So they still, they still need that Indian batting to come. Yeah. And you'll find every team that wins has a strong Indian batting core. Yeah. Delhi Capitals struggling this year. Three of their top five are overseas batters. It takes away all degrees of freedom. Mm. RCB, three out of top five overseas batters. Yeah. Takes away all degrees of freedom. Now you're stuck. Your Indian bowling has to do well. Mm. Whereas Rajasthan Royals, on the other hand, just to give an example, Butler, Hetmeyer, they're not playing power. Yeah. They'll be tempted to play power. Butler, Hetmeyer, Bolt, Burger. Yep. It's two and two. It's two and two. Mm. Ideally, in most teams, you must have two and two. Yep. But wherever you have to play three, it means you're losing degrees of freedom. Yeah. Okay. I just I mean, Will Jacks is a player that, yeah. you know. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about Will Jacks. I, but I'm, I'm looking at how do you get him in? Yeah. I mean, if, if, if Will Jacks plays, probably Faf doesn't. Mm. Or Jacks plays for Green and then just hope the bowler bowling does well. But yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't yeah. see that bowling is going to work. I just, and there's no I slow bowler at all. There's no spinner at all now. Mm. Yeah. Will, Will Jacks, he, he, he could offer you a little bit. I mean, you, you could go Will Jacks for, for Cameron Green. You could. You could go if they wanted to make a but change. But you have to play him at the top as well, right? Absolutely. You got to make him open. Then far yeah, better. <laughs> We're just kind of moving the jigsaw yeah, pieces yeah. around. I, I, well, I think Faf will carry on as captain, but if they wanted to make a change at the top of the order, the person that I would probably put is Will Jacks. Yeah, and that's another thing we say, right? Well, when your, ca your captain's got to be Indian, when you have a foreign captain, then that's one of four slots. So that does reduce your flexibility uh, quite a bit. So, yeah, I think to sum it up, uh, I think problems, more problems uh, for Bangalore. We've, we've offered a few solutions, but it's not up to us. Uh, the solutions have to come from... Uh, How many games have they got? They've got nine games left. They've got nine games. So, what generally qualifies? They've eight, got to win eight, seven, eight. ideally. Sometimes so you qualify got, with seven. They've got to try. Sometimes yeah, you they've got to win seven out of nine now. It's been, I mean, it's been done before, yeah, but they have to get a few of these things right. Because You've got to get a streak of four or five now. Yeah. You've got to get a streak of four. They're not going to win them all, now. are they? No. So that's why you need a streak of four now. Then maybe you can drop one some point. Mm. They've got to win at home. They've got to win all their games at home. Then that's the problem. They're not winning at home. Yeah. And obviously, they're not winning. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not winning. winning. <laughs> anyway. Well, Rajasthan's having a streak while they're having such a streak. Three at home a, now? It's a pretty cool streak uh, yeah. that they're having. Also, which, well, there were a lot of cool moments uh, in this game. So, uh, let's have a look at those. This is... Roll. Yes. Go ahead. Put the full frame. Thank you. <laughs> this is our carrier coolest moment of uh, the match. And uh, we've got a few that have come in from people. But before I show them... We'll uh, start yes. with what the two of you thought was uh, the coolest moment of the match. I actually thought Hetmeyer feeling happier than Butler oh, <laughs> about God. Butler getting his 100 was very cute. Was I, I, I thought Hetmeyer actually um, 
putting his arm around Siraj and, <laughs> yeah. then, and then realised that he might get run out. <laughs> he put his bat in. <laughs> I like Hetmar. I just uh, I, I like people that play cricket with a big smile on their face. Yeah. And he can hit. I mean, he, he, when it started to get a little close, nine out of ten, eight out of nine, you don't know he hits the boundary. Yeah. yeah. So I think Hetmeyer. I think we're all here, kind of in unison, saying Hetmeyer. We've got a few uh, tweets that have come in as well. Let's uh, read those out. Bring them now. They don't do anything without me telling them. Uh, this is Rahul uh, Sonawane. No cricket for more than two months. Walks into the tournament and scores two fifties and a ton. Only King Kohli can do it. That's right. No cricket for two months. Mm. You know something? Yes, I said this. I said this in the curtain raiser. He's not played cricket in two months. He is going to be hungry. It doesn't matter how many runs you've scored. He's going to be hungry when he comes in. And it has happened. Mm -hmm. Me likey. Okay, the next one. Uh, let's have a look at this. Uh, this is from Hariharan Sukumaran. Says, Butler coming back to form. Now, Rajasthan looks like an unbeatable unit. And he's got a little bicep emoji there. Mm -hmm. His uh, carrier coolest moment of the match. Do we have another one? Yes. We have Indy Indi Ka Ayush? No. Indi Ayush? Indi C A Yush? Indi Ka Ayush. Tough one. Uh, Sanju Samson leading the way with the bat for Rajasthan, the carrier coolest. That's a lot of moments, by the way, because he played for a long yeah. time. Is that it? Are those all? Okay. Well, uh, that was it. Those were our carrier room air conditioners. Coolest moment of uh, the match. There's plenty to uh, choose from. But yeah, that's just the kind of cricket that Rajasthan is playing. They're being very cool. In the desert, right? You've got to be cool in the desert. And that's what, uh, that's what <laughs> yeah. they're getting done. Is there anything, if I, was to, if I was to ask you, what's not working for Rajasthan? Is there anything I, they need to fix? Today, the fielding yeah. maybe a little bit? Maybe, but those are little things. Yeah. You've got to have either the bowlers win your matches or the batters win your matches. Yeah. The fielders are the icing on top. Mm. But sometimes I think, I hope that's not the feeling in the side. You saw that first tweet. About yeah, man, Virat Kohli did it. Yeah. It reminded me of a story. Tendulkar's hit this fabulous 100 in Melbourne. India have lost the test match quite easily. And I was walking out of the MCG and Mark Taylor, who just retired two years earlier, was walking with 20 meters in front of him. I love chatting with Mark Taylor. He's got a lovely mind, sir. He's a lovely guy. So I ran up so I could walk with him across the park at the MCG to get to the team hotel. We got to the hotel and there's a lot of our Indian supporters outside. And they were all cheering. They saw Mark Taylor. And they said, yeah, Tendulkar's got 100. And, you know, he just looked at them and said, but who won the game? Mm. <laughs> and I looked at that tweet and I thought of that. Yes, Kohli played fantastic. Yes, you're cheering. Yes, you're a Kohli fan. It's the Kohli fan base that's keeping the RCB fan base going without a doubt. But who won the game? Yeah, Rajasthan did. Yeah. But listen, I mean, that game, MS Dhoni, the last over against Delhi. Yeah. He did those go. runs. Yeah, so the, the fans are happy. Yeah, Let the fans be happy, Harsha. It's, it's all in India. I mean, these, these players are just godlike. You know, Rohit Sharma, yeah. uh, Virat, MS Dhoni, Sachin. Yeah. You know, these supporters, are, yeah. they're not supporting teams. They're supporting individual Pretty players. Good. I don't think it happens anywhere else in the world. Yeah. You know, it's just that the Virat Army are supporting Virat Kohli and, and, and Virat supporters are delighted. He's got 100. He's, he's played great. Yeah. You know, it's like the Rohit fan club that are just on top of Hardik at the minute. It's, a, it's only in this part of the world mm -hmm. that they support individual so, so, with so much passion. Also, it's great. It's great for the game, but... Oh. Also, by the way, that tweet came in after the first inning. So, the second did not happen at that point in time. So, <laughs> okay, we're not taking enough. your happiness away, buddy. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. I want to know the Rolati of You really made him cry. He's a fan, eh? Doesn't matter. Uh, he's, uh, he's not a fan. He's an AC. He's a carrier uh, room air conditioner. That's what he is. All right. Uh, so, let's quickly show you the points table and see who's ended up where. Uh, if you're a Rajasthan fan, yes, you're going to get a little crick in your neck because they are all the way at the top layer points table. Sharma Ahmad, put it. Put. Yes, thank you. There they are, all the way at the top. Uh, there's a healthy net run rate there as well. It's plus one. Uh, of course, the Knight Riders can completely dethrone them in the next game they play, but they are not playing for a couple of days. Uh, and then you have, after that, the middle muddle at four. There's a lot of teams with uh, two and two. Lucknow, of course, is two and one, which they can improve on tomorrow because they are playing. Uh, but this is what it looks like uh, right now. Uh, the Rajasthan team is looking pretty good. And remember one thing. Yashasvi Jaiswal has not scored runs yet. Right. And uh, next game? Next game, Michael? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just looking at the bigger picture for Indian cricket and Yashasvi needs some runs. Yeah. You know, when you're looking at Virat scoring all the runs, Rohit is the captain of the Indian T-10. He's going to play. 
He'll, uh, he'll need to get a few runs over the next few weeks. Were you a little surprised with how he went? Just Was this the second ball? Were you yeah. surprised that he kind of rushed out? And I can only imagine he, he, he knew that Reese Topley was going to be pitching it up. Yeah. And he thought, I'll go and meet it and I'll just try and whack one over mid on and get my innings off and run. He's not been in the runs and he probably thought, I'll go for the ultra positive approach. I'd rather a player go for that option in the first six rather than just prod around. So, yeah, yeah it didn't work. Uh, but he could do with a few runs over the next few weeks. Mm. They may be and he'll get them. Of course, he'll get them. In fact, he'll get them in the next game. That's what's happening with Rajasthan. He's going to get them in the next game. Or maybe he just thought, look, all I've got to do is clear the 30-yard circle. Yep. And it didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, well, so that's uh, today's game. We're going to talk about the two games that are happening tomorrow. The first one is the age-old rivalry of Indian cricket. This is a rivalry that goes back, well... 50, 60 years, uh, but not in the IPL. In the IPL, it only goes back a decade and a half. And the surprising thing is mm. that tomorrow, and who would have thunk it, there's teams 9 and 10 that are playing tomorrow. <laughs> I know. That's 9 and 10 there. Mumbai and Delhi, 9 and 10. My lord. And desperately, much like RCB today, if one of them loses that, they're suddenly starting to think, where's my season going? Yeah. I know, Mumbai, you, you know, you look back and say, Mumbai have come back after losing 5. Mumbai True. have come back after losing 3. Yeah. That's happened a couple of times. Doesn't happen all the time. Correct. So, it doesn't mean that because it's happened 1 in 10, hmm. that it can happen again. Yep. It doesn't happen. That, that was a great achievement. So, Mumbai lose. If, if Delhi lose, they're like, they're like Bangalore. The same. So, the for same. Delhi again, it's, it's trouble tomorrow. But yeah. Mumbai lose, they're 0-4. Mm. Which is as good as one in, like one win from five, yeah. The so they're zero from them. four. Yeah, the big thing for them is Sky comes back. That's right. That, that'll, but look, he hasn't played for a long time. Yep. So that'll be a huge factor. If he can come in, they move Tilak Varma up to three, Sky backs to bat, bats at four, but they need that opening combination. They need Ishan Kishan Rohit to get them off to get them off to great start. Yeah, tomorrow the stadium's gonna be blue, the sky's gonna be blue because it's a day game mm. and sky and is, Chennai is not playing tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's their uh, I think it's the it's the game where all the kids come, so it's yeah. really loud. Uh, that's the uh, that's the effort that uh, the Mumbai Indians make. Uh, so that's gonna happen tomorrow. And if Sky comes Whose place does he come in? Uh, Namandhir? Namandhir. Yeah, that's got to Namandir. be Namandhir. That still leaves number seven. I don't know who they, who they want to play at number seven. Either Nihal Vadera comes in to allow them a little more leeway with an impact sub mm. as a best, as an overseas bowler. Or they might just look at Romario Shepard. Romario Shepard is the kind of guy who will come and hit 40 or 15 balls at the end. Ah, some days. I'd, yeah. I'd go with him. And yep. if he can bowl four overs for the West Indies, he's, he tends to be a little expensive. Yep. But in that lineup, you only need him to bowl a couple of overs if needed. True. So, I'd, I'd be very tempted to look at him there. Unless afternoon, dry pitch, turning a bit, you want to look at a nubby, because he can also go big at the end. Mm. But Romario in Mumbai might not be a bad bet. Yeah, the two pluses for them definitely have been uh, Akash Madhwal and Tilak Varma. I think both of them have been yes. pluses uh, for Mumbai. One with so the bat, one Akash with the ball. Madhwal comes in, you've got a little more flexibility with the overseas batter. Yeah. That's him. So the moment uh, Mumbai have a huge strength because they've got such a fabulous Indian team core. It says that something is not clicking at the moment for them. They've lost three, mm. and what is worrisome is they've lost one game conceding two seventy seven. Yep. They've lost one game bowled out for one twenty five. Yep. So they've they failed at either end. Yeah. Uh, though I don't. I I think they probably felt better after that 277 game, even though they gave away 277. Yeah, they got close. They got very close. Yeah, they got, I mean, they're a dangerous team. I, again, I just look at the bowling and think, it's just a bit light. Hmm. Compared to some years, obviously, when they've won the, the IPO, where they had a little bit more quality. Um, clearly, Bummer is a, an outstanding bowler, and he's the standout. But He needs to bowl 10 overs. Yeah, if he can disguise himself like Jeff Thompson, bowl four and come back <laughs> at the other end, maybe he's got a chance. But Be uh, his own impact sub. Yeah. Well, Sky, Sky's the big plus. This yeah. guy's a big plus for Mumbai and uh, you know, I can't I can't see them performing to the level like they did against Rajasthan where they you know, there's not many teams come to Mumbai and blow them away. Yeah. Rajasthan did that. Um, I, I expect Mumbai to play that a little bit better tomorrow. Mm. Yeah, they need that Kudzi. Kudzi is the other impact bowler for them. Yeah. So the original idea I think was Berendorf bolts at the top, Kudzi bolts in the middle. We've got overs left for Bumrah at the end, so we've got bowlers in each segment, much like Rajasthan Royals. Yeah. But the best laid plans of men and mice? Yes. So suddenly all the left hand, there are two left hand quicks, Madhushanka had a fabulous World Cup, Berendorf, suddenly both of them are gone, Luke Wood comes in, he's gone, they're playing poor Quayne Amapaka, who's, who's got to be pulled out of his textbooks to go and play a cricket match. That's right. <laughs> so the suddenly, suddenly the bowling that was looking good is struggling and that's why Michael says he looks at that bowling lineup and says, 
So what right. do you do there? Yeah. Pius Chawla showed them up last time, but he's a year older. Yep. So and there's well, how old is he? Thirty-eight. Uh, he's on paper. He, yeah. Okay. He's plenty. He's plenty. Yeah. So yeah, it's not an easy game. Yeah. Plus plus. Obviously, mm. yeah. Uh, for Delhi, there's a little bit of bad news in terms of injuries. Don't know if Kuldeep uh, will mm. be playing, that's whether Kuldeep one. will be there. They need Kuldeep for sure. Uh, Mitch Marsh is injured. So that's word com- confirmed where, by Saurav Ganguly that Mitch Marsh is injured. Is he out of the game? Uh, yeah, so he's not going to be playing tomorrow. That's, that's what Saurav said. So that's but bad news. a couple of overs gone. Yeah, that's bad news for them as well. So, yeah. Uh, Mm, but they're, they're bowling again. Like, I, I, I got to say that it wasn't just Andrea Russell who applauded when Ishan Sharma got him out with that lovely Yorker. Uh, you don't see Andrea Russell lying on the floor very often. Uh, he did that. But uh, in terms of their bowling, they definitely need Kuldeep Yadav. Yeah, Kuldeep I mean, Axel obviously is a, an outstanding left arm spinner, but y- you need spinners that can just take it either way. So, Kuldeep, I, I don't know if he is fit tomorrow, but... Uh, they no, he definitely won't be. He's been told to rest for a while. All right, so he's a, he's a big loss. So big now, big. if I just bring that squad up again, right? Because there's a player that we talk about very often, and now with Mitch Marsh not playing, if we just look there, does... Uh, where have we got? Does Jake Frazier McGurk finally get a game? It, it, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, Tristan Stubbs has been magnificent. He played really well. In the last game against KKR, obviously David Warner, so there's two. Uh, Nokia, there's three. Uh, Mitchell Marsh is not playing. Uh, Jai Richardson, pff, not too sure. So you would think that Jake Fraser McGurk might, might yeah. get thrown in there. Same issue again. Where's, what's, what's the Indian batting? We talked about this so many times. What's the Indian batting? Prithvi Shaw has at least come back. Prithvi Shaw, Shaw Pant. and Rishabh Pant. That's Go on. it. Go on. So now they have to play three overseas batters again. Yeah. They might have considered playing Jai Richardson, who's fit. Richardson and Nokia both. Uh, with Richardson coming in for uh, for Mitch Marsh, but that would have meant you leave out a bowler and play an Indian batter in the top order. Mm. Who's that Indian batter in the top order? Did uh, by the way uh, today sort of did mention that we want to get Kumar Kushagra. Uh, yeah. We want to try to get him, him in. into uh, the scheme of things. So they've got a couple of interesting young Indian talent, young Indian batters there. But Yashtul isn't getting a game. He's no. been with them season after season. He's and not every se- every team has picked up one of these Indian batters who's, who's come and made an impact. Yeah, uh, pick them out of Mustaq Ali or whatever, and they've made an impact. Maybe Kushagra will be that person. He's done well for Jharkhand. But have you noticed this with Delhi though, and that happened last season as well, that they were getting these young players in, but none of them was really getting a run. No. Right? If you're getting a young player in, you want to give them a bit of a run, right? Because this is a very daunting, overwhelming tournament mm. and stage. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, yeah, throw them in. You know, why not? Why not? I mean, you look at Delhi in, in terms of their performance levels in the last couple of games, it's been a long way off. I know that, I think it was yesterday afternoon, they had to do a, a big fielding session. Ricky Ponting has is, is publicly said that the, the fielding display against KK is just not acceptable. The bowling in the fielding, he described in the press as unacceptable. Yeah. So he's had them out, out there catching balls. So you, you think they're going to be energised in the field, but um, you know they are light. They're light in that batting department. Mm. You know, it really is depending on that start at the top in Warner and Pritby Shaw. And obviously Tristan Stubbs has played nicely, but you're kind of looking at you know the depth of that batting lineup. It's uh, it's quite yeah. fragile. Mm. There's another factor. You're going to be fielding from half past three to quarter past five in this Hot. heat. Yeah. In this heat. What? Well, has Mumbai already won the toss? Or are you saying no, one of the somebody, two? One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> one of the two. No. I was like, is it tomorrow already? Have, <laughs> we, have we done this show for so long? <laughs> is it tomorrow? You're right. It's brutal right now uh, in Mumbai. The only advantage is that Vankade has got these big holes now. So a uh, little breeze comes in from uh, the sea. But yeah it's, yeah, it's pretty brutal. So the team that's fielding, uh, they, yeah, they, they're really going to have it. Anyway, play to watch out for from each of these. Delhi and Mumbai. Come on, boys. Come on, Pikun, oh, Pikun. Dele, I'm going to go with Tristan Stubbs. Tristan Stubbs. Yeah, he, he, Not he, for he, Mumbai. <laughs> Remember? Yeah. Tristan Tubbs. Tristan Tubbs. <laughs> Tristan Stubbs was with uh, Mumbai. And I'm going to go Sky. Sky, the little breather he's had. Light Vera, he'll come back. Bosh. Okay, cool. Sky. Do you want to play that I hope will, that I think needs to do well? You can't pick two. Don't give me a... Mumbai Rohit and Sharma. <laughs> Rohit Sharma? Mumbai Rohit Sharma. Okay. And Delhi? Prithvi Shaw. Delhi Prithvi Shaw. Because when he bats 30 balls, they, win, they start to win games. And he's but playing they, in Mumbai. Come on. 
Yes, the ground he knows very, very well. He's yeah. got a lot of runs on. But one of two or three Indian batters, so they desperately need him to do well. Okay, excellent. So that's the first game. Then the second game is uh, the two new franchises. That's right. Uh, they're only two years old, Al Lucknow and Gujarat. Uh, but Gujarat has won it once, runners up once. Lucknow has made it to uh, the playoffs both times, both uh, solid teams. But I'll tell you, Lucknow right now looking a little more solid than Gujarat. And Gujarat, of course, suffering from the fact that Mohammad Shami is not there and how much are they missing Mohammad Shami I know he's on a Hindi show upstairs <laughs> in a Hindi show right now what uh, would what would Lucknow or Gujarat give rather for him not to be on this show but to be out there yeah on their what, show he got a 28 wickets last year yeah, 27 last year. wickets or 28 wickets yeah 28 wickets. The other thing that's happened is... Rashid 28, Mohit 27. So, yeah, a lot. they, they got a lot of wickets, the three of them. The slightly worrisome for Lucknow would be in the last game, I think those, the two youngsters, Shashank and Ashutosh, yeah. they, they started playing Mohit for the slower... For, for Gujarat, yeah, that's true. Yeah, for yeah. The, for the, as the slower bowler and just waiting for him to hit the ball. Yeah. So, teams will now start to do that against, uh, against Mohit as well. Hmm. And I'm not sure as it, they've got the depth in bowling again. I'll just ask you about Rashid, right? I mean, Rashid was bowling with... There was Shami there, who was obviously getting wickets up top. There was Mohit, who was getting wickets up top. Hardik bowling well at the top. Hardik was bowling well at the top. Hardik was bowling well at the top. They don't have any of these right now. Is that also the reason why Rashid's efficacy kind of goes down? Because now the other team can just kind of play him out. Yeah, that's, uh, and that'd be the tactic. Yeah. Clearly, if you're chasing a big number, you can't have that tactic. But if you can afford not to give Rashid Khan too many wickets and you're thinking four hours, one, one for 28, yeah. something like one for 30, just put that into the bank. And then you can attack the other bowlers that you know you can get. I would think that's a, a sensible tactic against Gudra. I mean, I thought Shubman Gill held his nerve, you know, under the pressure when Punjab were, were hitting it to all parts. Sometimes you see captains flap and look a bit panicky. You look very, very calm, but it's the next game that can sometimes affect you when you've lost a game that you know you should have won. As a captain, you kind of arrive thinking, we, we should have won that game. And yep. tomorrow's now a really pressurised game. Yeah. You know, because it started well and then you've just lost a game you should have won. So I'd be intrigued. He batted really well. Got a really good eight yard and played nicely. I'd be just be interested as a captain how he arrives tomorrow and can he just galvanise this group into playing to the levels that, you know, we know they can in terms of the culture. The culture in the team is absolutely fantastic. You know that that's fine. It's just the skill levels. They're a little bit, well, quite a lot down in, on the previous two years because of Hardik and because, obviously because of Mohamed Shami. And can they kind of get a little bit extra out of everybody else? And I think there's any team in terms of culture, probably with CSK, you know, with Ashes near in the team and around the group, yeah. they seem to get the best out of everyone, which is a really good sign. But I think they're going to have to from here on in. Is Miller fit again, I wonder? Because the Miller didn't play the last game. That's a big loss. Miller's a powerful batter. Yeah. He's one of the better T20 batters going. He's straight for Kane Williamson, doesn't yeah. he? Also, if you notice, Rashid Khan is bowling deeper and deeper. Mm. He's starting to bowl 17, 18th over these days because of the issue that we talked about. They need that experienced bowler bowling down. He normally finishes by 15, 16. He's done. Yeah. He bowls those middle overs so well. Now he's having to bowl much deeper. Yeah. Uh, they did cop a little bit of flack uh, last time again with a batting order saying they sent Vijay Shankar at four when they could have sent the hitters. Uh, yeah. And when they reached 199, again, probably left a few runs at the table. Uh, so, I mean, they've also got a... It's, the game has become about such small margins that four or five balls, yeah. if you lead goal, it's, it's a lifetime, mm. right? And so they've got, to, they've got to look at that as well. So that's probably the only laps they had there. And since it went down to the last few balls, you always end up looking at uh, these things. All right. So, uh, yeah, for them, perhaps David Miller coming in uh, for Kane Williamson. If he's fit, we will know that tomorrow. For the Lucknow team, well, do they have uh, any... Well, they have Shiva Mavi who's been ruled out. So yeah. he's gone. But the story here has been simple. He uh, comes off, didn't play the last season because he was injured. And then he bowls uh, in the first game here, bowls rockets, mm -hmm. right? Does Mayank Yadav, gets the player of the match, comes in, people go, ah, oh, maybe the second game they'll figure him out. Nah, gets player of the match. Even better. Yeah. yeah. Can he do, can he do a three-peat, Michael? <laughs> um, can he go three and three? Well, he can. <laughs> he's bowling well enough, he's bowling with pace, his team are playing nicely. Uh, I've seen some good videos actually of uh, Justin Langer speaking to the team. Yeah. Uh, Siddharth, the, the, the left arm spinner, 
you know, some conversation that Justin Langer said, oh, what do you reckon? You bought a Virek, can you get him out? And he said, yeah, I'll get him out. And he got him out. So yeah. you can imagine the vibe in the group when you've uh, got that kind of relationship going. Um, look, they look a good team. They've got pretty much everything covered. Yeah. And when you've got Puran, I mean, he is striking a ball as well as anyone can strike a ball, probably yeah. with Henrik Klassen at the minute. He's a standout middle-order striker, hit sixes for fun. Uh, but they've got everything kind of working. I still think they can get the batting lineup changed slightly. Mm. There's one or two things that you would pull change. Pull run up? Yeah, absolutely. Pull run should bat at number four. Yeah. Now, why are you wasting him at five and six? And why are you giving him 21 balls, yeah. 23 balls, when you could potentially get 50 balls out of him if he played really well? Um, so I think the good thing for Lucknow is they've won two in two playing good cricket, but I think they still can get better. Yeah. There's some sides that, sides that win and you think they're probably peaked and playing as well as they can. I think this team can get better and better. So look at that uh, team sheet again and say what are the options that they have in terms of uh, bowlers, in terms of Indian batters. Mm. Because Ayush Badoni has not got them runs as well. They obviously... Uh, Padikal hasn't either, yeah. Yeah, and they've got Deepak Huda there sitting on the bench. So uh, I see him coming in. I see Deepak Huda coming yeah, you in. Yeah, Padikal maybe, yeah. Okay. And uh, Puran goes up, Huda comes Stoinis up. Stoinis can go to three and you can put has Puran to, to number four. Has to. Stoinis has to go three. Yeah. Because Krunal Pandya last game didn't even get to bat, right? And Krunal Pandya has done that, yeah. uh, what is it, 42 of 21, two games ago. You say he didn't get to. So, again, with the batting lineup, just just promote everybody up a little bit. Is that is that what the solution is? Yeah, and the cock in form is a big plus for them. So, now they've got the cock in form. They've got Puran in form. So, KL Rahul, if he has to open, he, he has to open. Otherwise, KL Rahul comes down, Stoinis opens, where, where he's had maximum success. Otherwise, I see Stoinis 3. Puran four, and then have uh, Huda coming in maybe at five. Yeah, they've got Naveen Ulhak there. They've also got Matt Henry. Uh, who's just come bench, in, yeah. So who's just right? come in, yeah. So Matt Henry's just come in. Are you tempted to pay Matt Henry? Because if Matt Henry and Mayank Yadav bowl together, where do you go as a batter? <laughs> so leave out Stoinis? <laughs> Did you have to leave out Stoinis? No, Naveen Ulhak. I'm saying in, instead ah, okay. of Naveen Ulhak, yeah, yeah, okay. if Matt Henry bowls, yeah. suddenly you have a spell of play eight overs where everything is a rocket at you. I'll tell you what, they could do even better. They could play Shamar Joseph and there's more rockets coming there. Oh. Shamar, I love a bit of Shamar. Yeah? I love the Shamar story, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, nice. I was there in Brisbane. Yeah, that was wonderful. Yeah, and, and they, you get rockets coming at you and then you have Krunal Pandey and Ravi Bishnoi. That's looking like a very good, good bowling words, attack. Yeah. It really is. All right, player to watch out for from each team. We'll go with you. Puran. Puran. Easily. Easy choice. Easy. Oh, I'm going to go for the, the, the story. My Aunt Yadav. Well, he's going to go three and three. Yeah, yeah. He just, yeah. He's got. He needs a new cabinet. <laughs> so, fair enough. And uh, mm. uh, Gujarat. Mm. Shubman. Yeah. Shubman once again. Okay. Playing pure. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise if he gets a hundred. Excellent. Shubman back who's 80 yard. Yeah, he's in form. And, and remember, remember, Shubman's an ambitious young kid who sort of India play T20 World Cup plays. You don't know. He must. I made 890 runs last year. How can you say I don't know? Okay, maybe I'll show them. So there's a story around Shubman that's developing. Excellent. I like that. All right. So those are uh, those are our picks for tomorrow. There's two games, of course, it's Sunday. It's a double header. No double headers on Saturday this time, but double headers on Sunday. So lots of cricket to be played tomorrow. Uh, we have the joy factor question and answer. Let's have a quick look at that as well. Bring it. Bring it. Slide it in. In a CSA T20 match between the Titans and the Knights, what uh, what feat was first achieved in October 22? Any idea? Any idea? No, any didn't idea? think about it. I'll be honest. Nothing? Nothing? Somebody? Anybody? Anybody? Somebody? Something? Anything? Both, both teams, and both, the Knights. Both teams got over 250. I don't know. Both teams got over 250. And you are... Up. I have no idea, honestly. I haven't seen the answer. <laughs> Let's have a look. What is the answer? First game to record over 500 runs in a D20 match. Yeah, you're right. Well, that's a bizarre guess. What's a guess? That's a bizarre... <laughs> he said 250 each. That's 500. Mm. That is brilliant. Now, winner is Michael Warren, but <laughs> that amounts to nothing because I've said it. So, let's have a look at who amongst you was the first person to get that in. Uh, it's Niket Patil. Niket Patil, congratulations. Niket Patil, is that 1800? Is that 1800? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's 1800. All right, excellent. I guess you're from the Renaissance period. So, uh, yes, you uh, are the winner. So, congratulations to you. And, of course, uh, the last piece of business is the guessing game. Now, I told you before that yesterday was a rough day for me. I had... Uh, is this, this going to be a long build-up? Uh, no, no, just it's really quick. <laughs> because, you know, when somebody recovers from heartbreak, friends should be happy. I just feel I'm like... I'm very happy for you. I feel like the two of you yeah, should well be done. happy. Well done. You're a bit lucky, but well done. Yeah. 
Mm. It's a guessing game. It's all luck. <laughs> <laughs> as much as anybody tells you, it's all luck. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that lad. Just. Yeah. In, in general, yes. you must look at two things on a table. Yes. You must look at who's number one. Yep. And well done, it happens. And you must look at who's grown the most. Yeah. From eight to 14. That's, what, that's a good jump. I'm proud of you. I'm proud and I'm happy. I, I need a good double header. <laughs> you need a very good double header. I need header. a good Super Sunday, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. All right. I'm bringing it tomorrow. But you know that I'm on with you, so. Yeah. Bring you it. can't have so much luck. Bring it. <laughs> Bring it. As Mr. Bogle told you this afternoon, it's not uh, luck, it's not a guess, it's analysis. Mm. It it's depends on who wins. Crunching the numbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. If you win his data analysis, <laughs> if I win, it's dumb luck. I'll take that. It's fine. It's a small fun show that on armor and the crown. All right. Uh, I'm going to sleep smiling, uh, but I'm going to see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock on Craig Buzz Live. Michael's going to be here. See you there. You're going to be at the ground. Roasting. Yeah, you're going to be roasting. Slow barbecue uh, at the ground. We're going to see you tomorrow at uh, 3 p.m. here on uh, Craig Buzz Live from Harsha Bogle. Michael Wong and the undisputed cha and Gaurav Kapoor. <laughs> Good night. Muhammad Ali and Gaurav Kapoor. <laughs> 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 Hyderabad Express Railway Station Data Team Babu Kepaya Hill